1993B. I'm going to walk through the process for how I solve this. Immediately what I see is I've got three equations up here, and they happen to be balanced. I'm probably going to have to use them all at some point or another. So now I see a bunch of words. Better read through it. We've got the amount of oxygen dissolved in water can be determined by titration. First, we have manganese sulfate and sodium hydroxide. They're added to a sample of water to convert all the dissolved oxygen to manganese 4 oxide, MnO2. So I see that oxygen is a reactant up here. Probably going to be useful. We're told that it's in basic conditions. That's okay. Moving on. Then we add sulfuric acid and potassium iodide. And equation 2 proceeds. So we notice that our MnO2 turns into Mn2+. We create iodine and more water. Then last, we have this iodine, I2, that's formed and then titrated with standard sodium thiosulfate, that S2O3, according to this third equation. What we want to figure out in letter A is how many moles of thiosulfate are required for analyzing one mole of oxygen dissolved in water. So I'm looking for moles of thiosulfate from moles of oxygen. I'm going to need to use some mole ratio conversion factors to get here. So I find what is common in both of these. I can't go right from equation 1 to 3, so I can look and say, all right, I've got MnO2 here, manganese 4 oxide, and that's also a reactant here. There's one set of mole ratios. Now I have to find my common factor between 2 and 3, and I see that it's I2. That's a reactant here, a product here. I'm given moles to start, and I want moles to end, so I'm basically just going to be using a bunch of mole ratios. Um, so I have this done already. Here's what we have. We started off with one mole of oxygen. That's what our given information was. If we go up here, that's really all we have numerically. So I know in order to get to thiosulfate, I need to go from oxygen to manganese 4 oxide. I've got a mole ratio of 2 to 1. That's what's here, 2 to 1. Next, I'll rewrite this so it makes a little more sense, 1 mole I2. Next, from manganese 4 oxide, I create 1 mole of iodine. So, 1 mole of I2, 1 mole of MnO2. I used equation number 1 to solve this, equation number 2 to solve this one. But I'm not done yet because I want to get to the moles of thiosulfate. So last is using this information here. For every two moles of iodine, sorry, every one mole of iodine, we need two moles of thiosulfate. So there's two. One times two times two. Four moles of thiosulfate. All right. Chances are we're going to need this information later. AP wanted to make sure we could do some stoichiometry. All right, so next. We've got a student found that a 50 milliliter sample, so immediately I'm going to write down I've got 50 milliliters of water. That's required to titrate 4.86 milliliters of a 0.0112 molar solution of th sodium thiosulfate. Immediately I should see, oh, I've got a volume, I've got a concentration. Moles will probably be useful. So here's everything I have so far. We want to calculate the moles of O2. Well, if we look here, we had one mole of O2 required four moles of S2O3, thiosulfate. That's what we're given here. We're given thiosulfate. We want to know the moles of oxygen. So I have all of this already here. I converted my 4.86 milliliters to liters just by adding a times 10 to the negative third. Then I took my concentration, moles per liter. Now I'm at moles. And then I use the mole ratio that I created up here to get my answer. I've got 1.36 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of oxygen. I'll take a picture of this and put it up after. There's that answer. So we use volume and concentration, multiply that to get moles, and use that mole ratio we came up with up here. Next, letter C. We want to know how the results in B would be affected if some iodine were lost before the thiol sulfate was added. Okay, so this is like a lab-style question. 
what we see is in B, we determined how many moles of oxygen we think there are. According to everything that we just did in lab, you know, in this theory from some data, there's 1.36 times 10 to the negative fifth moles of oxygen. But what we're saying is, what if some of this were lost? So I have to go back and think, okay, if some of this iodine were lost, that would require less moles, sorry, fewer moles of thiosulfate. If fewer moles of thiosulfate were used, then that would mean a smaller amount of oxygen would have been found. If fewer amount of moles of this were used, then we would assume we had fewer moles of this produced, fewer moles of this, meaning we started off with less oxygen. So my answer, um, in not a ton of words, a smaller amount of oxygen would have been found because um, the products of the manganese for oxide reduction would have had a smaller number of moles. Part D um, involves basically using some gas laws, um, using the ideal gas law PV equals NRT. That's not going to be on the unit one test. Um, the answers are right here if you'd like to pause and just take a look, um, but I'm not going to go through that.